tonight we're going to be talking about domain two. So when I took this pass, I want to say this occurred at the end of summer, but CompTIA changed the Security Plus standards. So on the SYO 501, which some of you guys may be using for study resources, this was this domain was technology and tools. Well, this has been done away with, and it, architecture and design has been moved to domain two. So with this domain, it's all about how you implement a secure system. You know, and it's thinking through security with physical and logical access controls. So one of the things that's going to be talked about that is displayed on screen is the defense in depth approach. So defense in depth is designed so that you know if you breach one layer, enough they're going to be met with another control. As the slide says, when dealing with threats, the assumption should always be that any layer can be violated or broken through. Thus, protection must be provided by sequential layers. One thing you're going to learn if you've worked in cybersecurity long enough is that there is not a one-size-fits-all security solution. So one of the things for the test that you're going to need to know pertains to security controls. You're going to hear talk about administrative, technical, and physical controls. And ideally, all of these control types are going to be working together to protect a company's assets. So if administrative with that, that's going to be policies and procedures. It's going to be onboarding an employee and offboarding. You know, for instance, I worked as a barista locally, and one of the things I had to do when I turned in two weeks' notice was immediately after my last shift, I had to meet with someone to do an exit interview and to make sure that my com all my company, you know, a little company ID they gave me for discounts was cut off and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Technical controls, that's going to be implementing things such as group policy in using password password policy where you're setting up a password expiration that has to change, setting up a firewall using Active Directory to assign access. And then the last one is physical controls. So that's using a door, a door that locks, setting up some fences and some cameras. This is one of the things that I personally did not see on my test, but I've heard others talk about it. And one of the things is going to be talking about security and risk frameworks. So you have COBIT, which is created by ISACA, you know, and it's to assist business to develop, organize, and implement operating procedures. You know, and COBIT's designed to develop an overall control framework, you know, and it includes security, risk management, and information gover governance. You have the ISO series. They are an international standard. And, but here within the U.S., especially for those of you guys here that work in defense, you're going to hear about the NIST 800 series. So you're going to hear, you know, either 853 or 800-171. And those are a set of controls that has been developed by the Department of Defense and by the National Institute for Standards and Technology to help develop a framework for what security controls you need to have in place to handle your data. And one of the things that is a coming down the pipeline and there's talk about when it'll be implemented is the CMMC or Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification, where they've taken elements from COBIT, ISO, NIST, and um, there's one other framework that's skipping my mind or escaping my mind. And they've combined them into a framework that based on the level of sensitivity uh, that you have within your contract, that you're going to have to implement more and more security controls as you go through. So in here on these slides, so you have ISO, and it's a code of practice for information security management, ITIL, and it's best practices, COSO, which is by managing internal risks, you know, by identifying relative vulnerabilities and determining how much damage it would do if exploited. And, you know, you have COBIT, which is connected, and you see that more in the finance word, but it's connected with Sarbanes-Oxley which is, you know, the standard used for how businesses can use your credit card data. Some other things that you guys will need to know with it is with pertaining to laws, directives, and regulations. So some common acts of law that we have here within the U.S., you have Sarbanes-Oxley, which that deals a ton with finances and investing. Of course, everyone here that's seen the doctor is familiar with HIPAA, 
that controls how healthcare data can be disclosed and who can be talked to and who can say what. Um, you have the Graham Leach Billy Act, and you know a ton of these different ones. Um, you have PCI DSS is another one that I have found I would recommend it being pertinent that you at least understand what it is. And that one deals more of credit credit card data, not Sarbanes Oxley. I'm getting that mixed up. PCI DSS is what you're going to see for, you know, handling credit card data. If you go to a gas station and you go and insert your pump into your card at the pump to pay, those devices have to meet PCI DSS compliance for that business to be able to use them to make sure your data is being safely handled. It's similar to how when we talk about in the DOD world that you need to be compliant with your NIST 800-171 or when CMMC gets rolled out, you need to be CMMC compliant to be able to do business with the federal government. Sarbanes Oxley deals a bit more with Corporate and actually, so here, so PCI DSS deals with credit card trans transactions over a business network. So, for instance, you know, if you go to Bridge Street and any shop there, ideally, they're, the systems that they're setting up for you to use Apple Pay or put your card in, they're going to be compliant with PCI DSS. Okay, so not. The not Sarbanes Oxley. I'm getting that mixed up. And pardon, pardon me, I'm still a little frantic. <laughs> So I'm jumping in a little bit, a little bit ahead tonight. You know, in here on this slide, they've, you know, you have a little bit of a chart that talks about, you know, for publicly traded company, they're going to need to be compliant with legal, with a regulation that's codified in law. They're going to need to be compliant with Sarbanes Oxley. The frameworks that are going to be used for an audit, that's your COSO, SS, SAS 70, and COBU. And with COBU, with HIPAA, you know, COVID's another framework that's going to get to be used to audit. So one of the things, the more you read into these different frameworks and do research into them, you're going to see bits and pieces of them that come across different fields. 